From the CISO series, it's Cybersecurity Headlines. These are the Cybersecurity Headlines for Wednesday, June 19th, 2024. I'm Sean Kelly. AMD investigates breach after data for sale on Hacking Forum. AMD is investigating whether it suffered a cyber attack after a threat actor dubbed Intel Broker shared some screenshots of the data it allegedly swiped from the company. Another source claims that the data includes employee and customer information, financial documents, source code, and other confidential information. AMD said it's working with law enforcement and a third-party hosting partner to investigate the claim and the significance of the data. Intel Broker is best known for the breach of DC HealthLink, which exposed personal data of members and staff of the U.S. House of Representatives. Killen demands $50 million ransom from a UK hospital. Following up on a recent rash of cyber attacks on UK hospitals we've been covering here on Cybersecurity Headlines, Russian speaking members of the Killen Gang are now claiming they've demanded $50 million from UK lab services provider Cinevis. On June 4th, Cinevis announced it fell victim to a ransomware attack that locked systems used to provide blood testing and transfusion services to National Health Service hospitals. A Killen member said they plan to leak stolen data online if Cinevis fails to pay the ransom. Killen also refused to accept responsibility for patients affected by the incident. Instead, they suggested the attack was retaliation for the British government's involvement in unspecified wars. Hackers derail Amtrak guest rewards accounts. In a breach disclosure it filed in Massachusetts, the passenger rail service said an unauthorized third party gained access to a customer database between May 15th and 18th. Amtrak said its systems were not hacked, but that accounts were likely compromised using usernames and passwords from prior breaches. Affected data includes customer names, contact information, Amtrak guest rewards account numbers, dates of birth, partial payment details, gift card info, and other transaction and trip data. In some cases, the hackers took over accounts and changed emails and passwords to lock legitimate users out. Amtrak took quick action to restore accounts and reset passwords and also urged riders to rotate their passwords and implement multi-factor authentication. BlackBod fined $6.7 million for a 2020 ransomware attack. South Carolina-based software company BlackBaud has been ordered by the California Attorney General's office to pay $6.75 million to settle a ransomware attack that took place back in May of 2020. The AG's office said that BlackBaud's poor security practices were to blame for the attack, including failure to implement multi-factor authentication, monitor its network, and encrypt sensitive data. The AG said the company then made misleading statements about its security controls and extent of the breach, which affected the private info of 13,000 nonprofits, universities, and hospitals. The press release said BlackBaud violated the reasonable data security law, unfair competition law, and false advertising law. The fine is part of a broader set of penalties, including a $49.5 million settlement with 49 states and Washington, D.C., which we covered on cybersecurity headlines this past October. And now we'd like to thank today's episode sponsor, Vanta. Whether you're starting or scaling your security program, Vanta helps you automate compliance across frameworks like SOC 2, ISO 27001, and more. With Vanta, you can streamline security reviews by automating questionnaires and demonstrating your security posture with a customer-facing trust center. Over 7,000 global companies like Atlassian, Flow Health, and Quora use Vanta to manage risk and prove security. Our listeners get $1,000 off at vanta.com slash headlines. That's V-A-N-T-A dot com slash headlines. Nearly 20% of Microsoft SQL servers have passed end of support. Researchers at Landsweeper scanned over a million instances of SQL Server and found that 19.8% were now unsupported by Microsoft. To make matters worse, an additional 12% were running on SQL Server 2014, which is due to drop out of extended support on July 9th. However, customers can pay to continue receiving security updates for SQL Server 2014 for another three years. The scan even detected a few instances of SQL Server 7, which was released back in 1998. The researcher said good luck upgrading a database running on SQL Server 7 to the latest versions. They concluded that it's tough to entice businesses to upgrade if systems are still working, adding, quote, it's only when the house is on fire when there's a massive vulnerability that somebody will go to care about that, end quote. 
Cut and paste tactics import malware to unwitting victims. Over the past three months, researchers at Proofpoint observed a threat actor tracked as TA571 using fake pop up text boxes suggesting an error occurred while trying to open the document or web page. Instructions then prompt users to copy and paste a malicious PowerShell script into either the PowerShell terminal or the Windows Run dialog box. The script then loads various malware strains, including remote access trojans and info stealers. The researchers said that cyber criminals continue to adopt increasingly creative attack chains that employ technical tactics not easily detected by users. They recommended that organizations update their user training to help them identify and report suspicious activity to their security teams. Onyx Phishing Service targets financial firms with QR codes. A new robust phishing as a service platform called Onyx Store is targeting employees at financial firms. The platform operates via Telegram bots to target Microsoft 365 and Office 365 email accounts. The phishing emails impersonate salary updates from HR departments as lures to open attached PDFs. The PDFs contain QR codes that, when scanned on a mobile device, bypass phishing protections to route victims to malicious sites mimicking Microsoft 365 login interfaces. Victims are then prompted to enter their login credentials and 2FA token, which attackers immediately use to hijack accounts before the token expires. Additionally, Onyx uses Cloudflare services to prevent its domains from being taken down, including anti-bot CAPTCHA and IP proxying. Two men plead guilty for hacking into law enforcement portal. Two Rhode Island men, 20-year-old Sagar Steven Singh and 26-year-old Nicholas Sorello, pleaded guilty to hacking into a confidential federal law enforcement database. Prosecutors said both men belonged to an aptly named hacking group called Vile that collected victims' personal data to harass, threaten, and extort them into paying to have their personal information removed from Vile's public website. According to the press release, Singh used a stolen password belonging to a police officer to access a non-public password-protected federal law enforcement portal. He then messaged victims threatening to harm their family if they did not provide login credentials to social media accounts. To prove he had access to sensitive information, Singh included the victim's social security number, driver's license numbers, and home addresses. As of Monday, both men have pleaded guilty to charges of computer intrusion conspiracy and aggravated identity theft and face two to seven years in federal prison. And that does it for today's cybersecurity headlines. We're looking forward to a great slate of live stream content this Friday, June 21st. We'll kick things off with Super Cyber Friday, where we'll focus on hacking Gen AI anxiety, an hour of critical thinking about how to create constructive outlets around this new technology. It starts at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. Then later Friday afternoon at 3.30 p.m. Eastern, we'll be running down the top cyber news stories of the week with expert insights from our guest, Bill Harmer, operating partner and CISO at Craft Ventures. To register for these great live streams, just head over to CISOseries.com and click on Events. We look forward to seeing you there. Thank you for listening. I'm Sean Kelly, reporting for the CISO Series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines.